Hey yo, it's the MOE at that show. Dope Hangouts, the podcast where we shoot the shit, do some shit, and talk some shit. I go by the name of Simo from More of Everything Media, where no one's got us like us. And when I say that phrase right there, you know I mean it and live it because the us that we have in the building today is a great, great friend of mine. This man is a barber by trade, is a artist by talent, and my hometown homie from the desert town, Devante. What's going on, my Woo! guy? That's good to see you. Yes, guy. <laughs> That, that, that's a throwback right there, bass guy throwback. cooking and everything you know, like that. You know, you know. <laughs> Shout out to all my people, man. All the peers from this video watching right now. Um, you know, we have came together today just to create as we like to do. People wouldn't have thought that we would have been doing something like this because, you know, it's, it's real easy to kind of just be like, nah, I don't want to fuck with him because of this. Like, nah, nah, I'm good. I got my own shit going on. Right. But dog, uh, let's let's get to uh, cutting right now because as you can see, I am horrible. I, I got a lot going on, all this extra growth, and um, also too, man. With, with th this guy is gonna be the guy that could uh, possibly teach me how to grow and fill in my beard, get the perfect beard, take notes with him, right? I know, I got a few notes. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead and cave me up, my man, and uh, we'll get the cut and the questions going, and then the people at the end, we'll go ahead and, and get to know your clean style, man. So, Devontae, you got the barber shop going, man, the independent shop going. And uh, uh, as people know, we came from Hysteria to uh, Vegas. Yes. I want to talk to you about the transition phase. I know we all had it different. When you first came to uh, Vegas from the desert town, what were the struggles? Did you come out here with a plan or was it kind of just like, I'm going to see what's going to happen? Man, I literally just got up and moved. <laughs> I came out here for my 20, I think my 21st birthday mm -hmm. for a weekend and got faded. My first time I ever drank. Beer. And I was like, you know what? I think I can live here. Because I got into the school out here mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm going to go to school. And I got out here and was like, man, I'm not going to school. Let's do it. And I started working. Cool, that's and cool. I realized fast, okay, working a job is not for me. Yeah. It isn't for me. I felt I have too much potential and I'm in a city full of opportunity. I need to seize the opportunity. Mm. And from there, just call that wildfire. I feel that, man. Just seizing the opportunity because there's so many opportunities out here in Vegas. So many. Yeah, and, and then like I said, I'm going to go to school. I ain't going to go to school out here. Were you going to go to CSN or UNLV? I was going to go to UNLV. I got accepted there. Okay. Just to finish my, you know, my schooling, but yeah. I just felt school was going to be a waste of time for what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and be happy in life. Yeah. 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 And uh, for a lot of people that may not know, you're a licensed barber, correct? I'm licensed. Correct. Since when? Since 18. I'm 26 now. Mm. Yeah. 18 years old. And uh, why are you not in the shop? What, what stops you from going to the shop and um, cutting there? Uh, the shop, I just don't like the structure of it, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm paying someone to show my craft off when I can do it in home, my own setup, and keep all my money in my pocket, like Nipsey said, all money in, you know? Mm. Until I can at least get my own shop. Like Nipsey said. Like Nipsey said. Dog, I like that. I like that. Because we were talking earlier, it, it kind of balances out. If you paying up to a grand for rent, barbers got to pay rent for their chairs. A lot of people don't even know that. A lot of people don't know that. So so, so, so what does that mean? You, you just you just cutting the break even at the shop. Basically, like, so the month starts, each week is what, 200 to 50, depending on the shop. Mm -hmm. That's what, 800 to 1,000 dollars a month that mm -hmm. you're already in the hole, negative, you get another month. So you have to charge people an arm and a leg for a damn haircut. <laughs> and I feel I shouldn't be charging you an arm and a leg because they're not going to come back. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. charging an affordable price mm -hmm. so I can make money and keep my customers happy. Mm -hmm. We're all winning. Yes, sir. That's very true. And I like winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, a lot of my barbers around here, around Vegas, man, they left the shop or either, either left Vegas, kind of doing their own thing, you know, at, at home, like here, but, but you got an amazing setup, my man, amazing setup. 
And, and, and I want to talk about more just about that, like, self-care. Uh, uh, what it ties into keep men's health and grooming themselves and basically being confident about themselves when they look good and they feel good. Now, I want to talk about, like, like how important is it that men groom themselves at a weekly basis? I mean, money-wise, it's very important for me, uh -huh. but self-confidence is very important for you because mm. I have this slogan to where you come nappy, you leave happy. Yeah. <laughs> and I like the feeling when guys get up there, they choose their taking snaps like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get at least three, four, five bitches off this one. <laughs> so you're like, okay, that makes me feel good that I'm giving you confidence to yeah. where you can go get any girl you want. So I'm yeah, like, like, why not feel that confidence each week, mm. right? Yes, and sir. And I just build the rapport, the relationship, and they come back. I like, I like that saying. Say it again for people. What was that? You come nappy, leave happy. <laughs> come nappy, leave happy. That's clean, man. That's clean. Because, yeah, they hit up downtown that night. And they, what did they get? Four, five. Off the cut. Just alone, literally. <laughs> Off the cut alone, man. And, and also tying into just grooming yourself, I know you are a big advocate for your health. Yes. You, my friend, did a big transformation with your body, my dog. You made all kinds of gains, worse than the Hodge twins. You made hella gains, my man, over just the course of us know uh, of us knowing each other in like middle school, high school. Man, it, it was after that. Like, when, when did you decide, like, hey, it's time to change my body and time to just like like bulk up and then also take care of myself? Honestly, man, it was like 17, 18. I was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm short. I'm not that good looking, I'm dark. I need something to gravitate the bitches to me. Mm. And it was, you know, either start selling drugs, get tattoos, <laughs> or go to jail and, yeah. you know, bulk up. Get them something to look at, of course. They need something to look at. Yeah. And then from there, I just stuck to it, man. Yeah. I do fitness, self fitness. Like, all right, I'm going to try challenge myself. Yeah. 90 days. Okay. Let's see if I can do this for 90 days. Transformation. And. People tag along on my social media. If they don't, you know. Dog, I, I, I like how you're open about that. Real talk, real talk, because it it kind of it kind of stems into that whole confidence thing. A lot, a lot of guys they, they kind of don't don't know what to do because me, I'm not, I'm not tall either, man. I'm I'm, I'm about five seven. Right. I'm not tall either, so it's like I I, I said this a long time ago on Twitter. I was like I was like, yo, either if, if you black, you either gotta be short and buff and funny. Or if you're tall, you got to be a ball player, and you could be skinny, but you got to be a ball player and be Some. like, be sub, be sub. You can't be the latter, you know what I'm saying? You got to be one of those two things. But at the end of the day, it it, it probably was just a, it made you feel good, huh? The mm -hmm. height didn't matter, the looks didn't matter. You felt good about yourself. Yeah, because the height, I, I grew within my confidence. Okay, I'm short, I, I embraced it. But then now with the body, with the body, I'm getting rich at five ten. You know, 5'11". <laughs> they see, they like the confidence now. Like, all right, I don't care about this he's short or his body. I care about his confidence, he, the way he carries himself. They're like, oh, you can pick my yeah. ass up. You yeah. can pick me up. I mean, I ain't that strong. <laughs> You know, I ain't that she, she, she got to she, well, she got to weigh she got to weigh one ten she got to weigh one one I mean, one thirty. So she got, it don't matter. Yeah. I, I got a girlfriend right now, so I like her weight. Whatever the way she is. Oh yeah. I like her. Sorry, weight. sorry about this girlfriend. Ain't trying to get him in trouble or nothing. You know, you know, black men don't cheat. It's not our anatomy. You know. Black men don't cheat. Right. I said this with my guy Kariga. That's the motto. That's Faithful the motto. Black Men Association, man. MVP. <laughs> but yeah, no, awesome, awesome. You know, sh shout out. You want to shout out the lady? What was her name? Uh, my girlfriend's name is Akaya. Okay. She's about to probably watch this. She's at work right now. <laughs> shout out to Akaya. He's doing a great thing here. And, you know, speaking on that essence of just growing, being confident, living independent, go ahead and take a quick second to show the people your sweater, my man. Oh, yeah. This is one of the few sweaters that I designed, you know, independent, my own brand. Living Indie. Living Indie. And the back says, the route taken is more important than the destination. Mm, a lot like of people that. ask me, what does that mean? I'm like, yeah, it's good you got to your point, but a lot of people want to know the story of how you got there. Yes. So the route is always important. A lot of people don't care if you made it to the basketball. They want to know how you get there, what adversity you fall, you know, stuff like that. And that just stuck with me because I feel like my journey, my route is still going. Oh, still going. That, that's something deep right there because I wanted to talk about the back of the sweater, but, but I wanted to start off how you how you came to this brand, you know, how you wanted to go ahead and make it a, a clothing line, the indie. You you say, uh, what do you say? Living freely, 
uh, living out of bounds to, to no one's expectations. Right. In, in the gist of that. So, 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 so what makes, you know, the indie brand, uh, uh, how, how do you want people to, you know, basically get motivation off of your clothing and off of your words? Well, I just let them know, like, man, you're not, you're not accustomed to living by other people or society's standards. Mm -hmm. I thought you can be your own person. You mm -hmm. can design your own thing, you can wear what you want, you know, especially this day and age. Everyone does their own thing. They, they're following trends, but they're doing a trend of their own flavor. Mm -hmm. And I just got tired of drawing and designing for other people's brands. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go indie. That's, you do music, you know. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm an indie artist. Yes, I felt sir. like that stuck with me. I'm an indie artist. I'm doing everything by myself. Yes, sir. No big backing. And it just stuck with me. You, you, you felt the trials and tribulations yes. of, of living in India, kind of staying in your own lane is what you like to preach to the people. Like, you're not distracted by what, what else is going on. You said not easily affected or influenced by others, man. Yes. I like that. I like that because it's hard. It, it's hard to look at who's doing. Who's doing what? Who's doing this? Who's yeah, doing and who's, Where who's who's steps going? ahead of you, but you're like, that's not my lane. You know, my lane and my time is going to come. Just not like that person. Right. Just not like that. And, and okay, so. Why do you have an indie with a Y? Explain, explain that. Uh, I don't know. I just, I just like that design better than the I E, mm -hmm. honestly. So I just stuck with it, and I felt like it gave a little more, you know, a little more okay. taste to the design. But I'm gonna switch it up, you know, here and there, because I'm different. I'm not gonna stick to what people think. Oh, it has to be spelled this way. Yeah. I think that's why I did it, because. I didn't want to spell it the way everyone thought. Oh, you spell it like this. It needs to spell like this. You spell it wrong. Mm. I'm doing it by myself. I don't care how you want it. This is how I want to do it. Smart business move. Right. Because when they look, because if they're trying to look up the regular spell indie, it's boy, what's going to pop up all these other damn all things? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. So um, you got a you got a, um, different colored hoodies out, and you got a new release coming. I got a new release coming as well. It's the uh, the the SS. SS twenty. SS twenty. Spring? Spring season 20. Oh man, spring season 20. So I, 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 you know, I like that. It looks like to me, I don't know if it's Japanese or Chinese writing. What is it? It's Japanese traditional. Japanese. Oh man, you know, I'm sold already. That's I why know. I sent you those fire emojis. You know, I like that already. I'm a sucker for that. Japanese uh, uh, words on the shirt, that print. It's very clean, my man. It's crazy because you kind of inspired that. Remember back in the day, you had your first first tattoo was what that, that Asian tattoo, right? <laughs> right? My first fucking first tattoo. tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm I was here, 16 years old, this immature ass tattoo. I was so jealous of the damn tattoo because <laughs> I didn't have one at the time. I, I don't think I was the first kid in class to get the first it. Kid. And I was like, bro, I need a tattoo. Well, good, the good thing you didn't you didn't do it at 16, man. Oh, you would have maybe uh, regretted it. But anyway, okay. So yeah, appreciate I just like that. the traditional appreciate tattoos, that. you know, the traditional. Chinese culture. Yeah. And I'm gonna ride that wave yeah. right now because no one's on that wave right now. Dog, it is a great wave, man. It's, a, it's niche. It's niche. niche, so you're gonna have a core fan base. Yeah. And a lot of people, a lot of people are, you know, riding the wave right now. They love that. They're hitting me up like, bro, when is this dropping? When is this dropping? And I'm kind of anxious to just drop it because a lot of people are asking me, but mm -hmm. I want to keep them waiting, you know? <laughs> I want to keep them waiting like a virgin, you know, and wait for marriage. <laughs> Funny as fuck. Wait for it. For the right time. The right, the right time, time. But no, I have a lot of stuff, man, that I want to drive. My, my head can't mm -hmm. keep up with designs. Like, I want to design this, I want to design that. Okay. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Within within the trials of creating your own brand, it's definitely it's definitely come with struggles. We got to oh. talk about that. What do, do you feel, do you feel the biggest struggle or kind of feel a little bit of dis uh, disappointment in your peers from your from, from our hometown. Do, do, do you feel like they could be supporting in different ways or a little bit better? How, how do you feel that support is? Even Honestly, from you? the support, a lot of my customers have came from our hometown. Good deal. So I, I fuck with everyone from Hysteria, uh, HD, Victorville, do as do I, as, as do, do I. I. I'm just curious. A lot of people from high school have been buying them, man. I, like, so I started with 140 units. Damn. December 11th. Damn. Today's what, January 15th? Yeah. I'm down to seven sweaters left. Nice, man. With, over a little over a month. That Oh, that's good. I'm almost sold out, man. A lot of them, my purchases have been shot. Oh, man, y'all keep, keep supporting. Keep supporting. Fucking good. Keep supporting. That shit is good. The, the more you buy, the more I'm going to design. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly how it is. 
Yeah, man, because because uh, uh, like me, I got a brand as well. But I, I'm not going for the whole clothing line. I'm just sticking to I'm sticking to, to one fine one tech. My first batch sold out, and yes, majority of the people were from my hometown, and and I, and I was happy. But a lot of people, you know, talk about you have to really leave your hometown to get that type of to to, to kind of take off in your brand, you know. So so I, I'm glad I'm glad that 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 we're one of the rare few that get that support from our hometown because it doesn't come like that. It doesn't come easy. You hear rappers and songs talk about my own people didn't fuck with me until I started going on tour, and then when I got the clout, it fucking came full circle around. Clout you know? is a terrible drug. <laughs> clout is the worst drug. <laughs> if you're on clout, go see a therapist right now. It fucks with your head. It fucks with your head. But the people gotta have it. People gotta, people, have gotta have it. It. Like <laughs> people gotta have it. It's like aspirin. People gotta have it. Do you have in mind for any um, <clears throat> any influencers to kind of wear your to wear your product? Because um, you have you worked with um, very very influential and even famous people. You've cut them before. You've cut them before. So are, you had that in the in the plans for the future? I mean, hopefully. You know, it's not something I want to do right now because. A lot of these social media influencers or anything, mm -hmm. they want stuff for free. And mm -hmm. my stuff is just starting and I don't have financial means to just get give it for free. free. You know? You don't feel like a trade-off will, will, will be good? Like, hey, you, you post it on your story and on your timeline and tag me. Tag yeah, me if, if that was the case. But you said. A, a lot of them want money for their post. They want, they want the stuff for free mm -hmm. and they want you to pay them for the promotion. I'm like, damn, if you say you fuck with me, it should cost zero for you to support, you know? So how much do you really support? Mm. So yeah, I haven't sent anything out to big any, big any names, you know. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people who have social media followers, I've sent it to them. Mm. But that's just because you know I fuck with them. Yes, sir. So purchased it, you know. But I'm not in the I'm not in the financial state to give anything away for free. Yeah, not for free. It's got to be a trader or that that mutual. Just purchase it for me, dog. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. You support me. You're false money me. on Instagram all day. <laughs> and I spend forty five dollars on a, a hoodie mm -hmm. that, or a shirt that's gonna have people turn the next like, damn, what sweater is that? Let's talk about the times that, of course, you did get paid for your services, man. Mm -hmm. you, 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 clean cuts. Um, I saw you um a while ago. You just archived that that you were with Shiggy. Yes. Did, did you cut Shiggy? I cut Shiggy. How was that experience? It was uh, it was funny for sure because he, no, this slang used in New York or wherever back east. Mm -hmm. Their slang and terminology of haircuts is different from ours. Yeah. So he said, I want to shape up, and then up the top, a little off the top. I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? <laughs> so I said, you know, show me a picture. Show me a picture, and I got it done. But it was definitely a show. It was a show cutting his hair, for sure. <laughs> I caught him digging in his nose, and you see that? Like, nasty bastard. Yeah, I saw that. You caught him digging in his nose. He, he, he ate it, too. Well, it's funny because we had Capriati's before, so I know he wasn't that hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have been that hungry. How did you get in that position to cut Shiggy, and then you also cut someone else that was uh, who? That was made it. Oh man, how did you get? In, how did you get in that position? I want to hear about um, that. It's this guy that I know. Shout out to Ray Milk Money, uh, LTD. He hooked me up, man. I cut his hair so good. He was like, "Bro, I need to put you on with everyone that I know." Mm. And then next day, I'm cutting Shiggy. Mm. She was in town. She was like, hey, I need a barber. Of course, he's like, hey, I, I got the perfect job. So, you know, I, I left my job. He's like, hey, I'm going to go cut some hair. I don't care. This, this job is not going to, it's going to be here when I get back. Yeah. Yeah, take the opportunity. Take, I, I That's take the opportunity. That's I the opportunity. And when I cut shit, he posted me. And then from there, people started hitting me up. Like, oh, I see you cut such and such. Cut such. And then Mike made it. Like, hey, I'm in Vegas. I need a barber. Oh, it was fine. 10 o'clock at night. I went to his, uh, his hotel room, uh -huh. cut him and his, his posse up. That's fine. Yeah, you, you need to move it out the way, bro. Oh, yeah, I got you. The left little fruitful uh, <laughs> pocket. Full, fruitful you know? conversation. Yeah. Fruitful conversation, you know? So that's that's it right there, man. That's a piece of the formula that, that people the people don't know that piece of the formula. They don't want to start a type of trade that can lead them to owning their own business and brand as their passion. Right. So you, I'm guessing, you know, just an assumption, you took that fruitful conversation and put it towards bigger and better things. Bigger and better things. I invested in myself. Say it again. I invested in say, myself. Say it again for the people. I invested in myself. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what happened. That's 
what the fuck we want to just do and teach here at Dope Hangouts, people. You got to understand, man. It's definitely investing in yourself, investing in yourself, and just also just knowing that opportunity that, that you can take all those excuses of like, oh man, I, I can't get it, I can't get it together. I can't, I got no time, man. Yeah, I got no time. I can't scrape up the bread. But you out here doing all these things. Right. You out here doing all these crazy things. You got jet skis and Hawaii and <laughs> shit. Like, you can afford to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. I invested in myself with the barring, with the clothing. I took a big risk. Mm -hmm. Like, I just told her my car, I had what? a couple of yeah, I told her my car. Oh, and I, I was like, man, it's either buy another car mm -hmm. or invest in myself. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what, a car can wait. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this off the ground because I feel like this is the time. This is, this is where my sign is. Yes, sir. And I definitely say it paid off. Yeah. I hear that. I hear that, man. Hey, I'm happy for you, dog. Real talk. I'm happy that you're living 100. percent Your passion. Uh, you're your own boss. You know what I'm saying? Now it's just catering to the customer. And speaking of the customer, which I am today, I want to ask you, how the hell did you grow your beard so thick and full, dog? I can't. I can't. I can't get my shit to connect. It's, it's like the, 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 the genetics only went to one side. This, this side can't do anything. Like my father What's told some me. What's some tips you can give us? You gotta, you gotta put your face in. You, know? you, gotta, you gotta get a little more pussy. You know? That's it. That's all. That's the, that's the secret. That's the secret. That's the secret. Get a little more pussy. That's it. That's it. Baby, I'm on the way. I'm on the way. What's your wife's name? Bertella. Bertella. He's on the way. Okay? Get a little bit of that ponte pie. All right. Get the juices and you just lather it in. You know, 30 minutes every night. You're good. I'm telling you. All right. I've been eating pussy since I was 21. <laughs> hey, look at this. With a little bit of a biotin. You know, biotin oh, helps. Five dollars. Walmart. You know. I hear that. <laughs> That is hilarious, dog. Nah, man, but it's it, it's clean though, man. I'm I'm gonna have to probably restart that. I'm probably have, gonna have to get them juices on my clean face, yeah, man. So yeah. So so honestly, I'm probably gonna have you just. But keep the mustache and the goatee. I'm probably gonna have you. You sure? Yeah, man. No Take it back. down. There's no coming back. There's no coming back except in a couple months. A <laughs> couple of nights. <laughs> Stick your face in there, I'm telling you. I trust my, yeah, my dog I trust just to cut it off, man. And then we'll, and then we'll get it back together. Hey, just sidebar real quick, no plug over here. Right. You, you heard of um, Minoxidil? Have you heard of Minoxidil? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, Minoxidil is like like droplets that come in the foam that people that like people use on their um, head. It's like a t it's like an ingredient in a game. Did you know that there's, there's this group? There's this group on um, Facebook and doing my research, I, I just came across them on YouTube as well. These guys use, use Rogaine that's supposed to be for your head. They put it on their face and use it to grow their beard within within six months or so. So they're basically a beating system. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. How you feel about, about those guys I mean, using Vinaxidil? I wish they would. I don't know nothing about it. So mm -hmm. I just wish they should share the wealth of people like you that want to know mm -hmm. how do I get a beard. They can be... They can make some money off of it. Mm -hmm. Trademark it, put a different name on it. And well, honestly, um, and I still, you could, you could buy it in um, like a Walmart, CVS. Walmart. You, could, you could buy it, you buy it though. I'm just curious, I'm like, people don't call it the natural, but. Um, it's not natural. Yeah. Well, at this day and age, with booties like Black China's, what is natural? <laughs> you know? What's natural? What is natural, dog? What's yeah. natural? Yeah. You, you got niggas with like fucking toupees of dreadlocks on. I seen a bald dude get a dreadlock toupee glued in and he had my style and I felt disrespected. You know what that reminds me of? When we used to play Vento Bottle mm -hmm. and you go to the barbershop ball and you come out with an afro. <laughs> that's, that, that's what the barbershop reminds me of now. You can go in there and ball uh -huh. and come out, come out with some waves or a, a damn head full of dreads. <laughs> and I think it's cheap. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's cheap. And also too, man, r regarding you being a just like a great like artist by talent. And when I say artist, I mean like that illustration, that that, that graphic art, man. Just you with the with your hands and the pen, just doing work. W when did you find out that that you can draw and, and paint? Um, young, yeah, honestly, like sixth, seventh grade. I was I was that kid everyone used to pay. Five bucks for 
uh, a drawing to put in front of their folder. I think you, Pinky, wants to draw an ice cream logo for you. Did I? In front of your folder. From the ice cream brand? Yes, yeah, from the ice cream brand. I was brand. gonna say, man, I was like, I was like, because I, I, I don't remember much, I don't remember much of you like showing that side, honestly, dog, like growing up. It was a remember. side hustle, you know? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Because we were doing other things. We were going to the parties. We were playing football. We were doing all these other things, man. But 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 like just, just around that area, kind of like kind of where when when we met. It's okay. That's clean, man. And now and now you now you're doing like I'm doing big things, things, man. Selling them. The portrait of that um of that babe eight that that you posted on your Instagram, man. That was fucking phenomenal. And you have it posted on your wall here as well. And then, do um, you have anything anything new that's like you haven't shown yet? Do you have any, any pieces yeah, that you did a, for somebody? I have another big piece that's uh, coming soon. It's done. I'm just waiting for the customer to pick it up, you know? Okay. But if you guys want to see, I can show you, you know, when we're done here. Oh, hell yeah. But man, that that is fly. That is fly, my dude. Now look here, as we reach the end of our clean cut, our dope hangout, I want to, I know you, but I feel like I want to give the people a deeper dive into the mind of Devontae here, my guy. You kept it, <laughs> you kept it raw and uncensored to us today. I like that shit, so I don't know how further we can get in the mind of Devontae, but we still going to ask him. We're going to start off with either or. Does Devontae like it hot or cold? Hot. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Books or audibles? Books. iPhone or Android? iPhone. I gotta take this question off if I can <laughs> Do you prefer a phone call or a text? Phone call. Is this in person or when it comes to appointments? Um, both, honestly. Okay. Phone call, just get it in, get it out. Get the fuck out of the way, yeah, get it out of the way. Okay. Is your favorite Twitter, Instagram, or Snapchat of the social media? Right. Social media, okay. I'm gonna say porn is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in the hospital. 
little bit. Thank well, you. okay. It's, it's I, hear you. I hear you. Last question. What is the end goal for Devontae and in Indy? Yeah, oh, in, in the brand or just me? Uh, a mix of both. Give me an answer for both. Yeah. Uh, well, the brand, I want to be, you know, of course, big, but I don't want it to lose its culture. Mm-hmm. I still want it to have that that raw street feel of an artist designing what he wants. Like, everything I drew is on my shit, and I love seeing it come to life. Mm-hmm. So, I just hope in the end, I keep it the same as when I started this, you know, on a bigger scale. Mm-hmm. I got more people wearing it and living in it, mm-hmm. you know? I feel that. I feel that, man. That's like people who can just take these podcasts, take these talks, man. We just talk and shooting the shit. They can take it and learn something from it, dude. I'll be happy as well myself, man, because I, I get that sort of similar answer from all my guests, which is what I hope for when I bring them onto the podcast, man. Be on a bigger scale, have the same morals of when you started and stay humble. When you started while showing other people, you can do it too. You can do this too. If, if you're afraid to take that leap, I don't know, you need to do it now or never do it at all. If you're afraid to take that leap, leave the nine to five, start off with the footwork, keep the hustle going, and that's exactly, exactly what you've done. That's what I did. I told myself, you only miss the shots you don't shoot. Yes, sir. So I took the risk and took the shot and it went in. I'm still in the gym, though. I'm still shooting in yeah. the gym. So we're going to hope these shots keep going in. <laughs> My guy. This has been another episode of Don't Hang Outs, where no one's got us like us. I go by the name of Simo from Word Everything Media, of course. Same face, brand new, new space. Yeah. I'm only Devontae's shop. So, with that being said, Devontae, I want to give you the floor real quick, let people know where to find Indy, how to book you as a barber, and what else you got going on. Uh, you can follow the brand page at Live Life Indy. That's Live Life Indy with a Y. You can follow me at Tay, T-T-A-A-Y-Y-Y, it's three Ys. And my barber page, it's Tay Cuts. Simple. You can DM me, click the link to book, and you're good to go. Come back happy, you know? And you can, of course, find me at www.moreofeverythingmedia.com. Um, of course, follow social media, M-O-E-X Media. Watching this right now, you should be watching it live, the damn premiere. I want you to go ahead and comment, like, subscribe. And if you don't do any of that stuff that me and my friend here kindly ask you to do, we won't give a fuck. We won't fight you. We'll block you. We won't block you, bitch. We we'll block you, and we wouldn't give a fuck in the first place <laughs> because we still gonna be doing this shit anyway. We're gonna be creating for the love of it. We're gonna be profiting for the love of it. With that being said, Simo, clocking out. Yeah.